morning, everybody. Welcome back to Crafting and Crime Daily. I am your host, Rebecca, and I recap live trials. So you have something to listen to while you are crafting. And today's Friday. Woohoo! Yes, payday is next week for me. Some of you get paid today. And for that, I say, yay, go spend that money. Um, so today, uh, we're going to go, we're going to cover the opening statements in this brand new case, it's New Mexico versus Hannah Gutierrez Reed. And the Reed part is pretty important. She keeps that Reed part. And I'm going to tell you why later on in the, in the show. So uh, before we even get to the opening statements, there was an issue with one of the jurors. So they had to wait for this juror. They weren't, they were late. And I think it's because they got into an accident. But anyway, they were late for trial. So they had to wait to start the trial. But when the judge finally brings in the jury and before she starts giving them, you know, her opening spiel, she lets the jury know that, you know, one of the jurors, you know, we got a late start today. You know what? Accidents happen. Now, she didn't use the quotes. I'm using the quotes. But... I thought, oh my God, she just summed up this entire trial. <laughs> Accidents happen. Like what a prophetic statement to come out of the judge's mouth before we even hear opening statements. Accidents happen. Well, let me tell you, this stemmed out of the shooting on the set of Rust. It's an old Western movie that was being produced by Alec Baldwin and crew. And they were out on a ranch called Bone... Bonanza Creek Ranch. It's in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Thousands of acres for this ranch. And on this ranch is this old western town and this old church. And I'll show you pictures of both. Um, Hannah Gutierrez Reed is charged with involuntary manslaughter. And the jury is given an option. They're going to get to that involuntary manslaughter one of two ways. Either through her negligence or her her uh, not following ordinary care. So she's also charged with tampering with evidence. And that stems out of apparently after the shooting happens, she gives a bag of cocaine to someone else on the set, someone she doesn't really even know. And this person is like, oh my God, what? and they get rid of it. They're like, I don't want to get caught with this. And they get rid of it. So then she keeps contacting the, the person that she gave it to saying, I want it back and it's gone. So, but what that has to do with this case, I have no idea, except I guess she just didn't want to get caught with it after. I mean, it's not evidence of her negligence, unless I guess she was using it on the set during the movie filming. Now she is alleged to have used some drugs the night before and, uh, you know, in her off time. Well, so uh, the judge, before we get to opening statements, also confirms with Court TV that they will not be showing the first video that's going to come into evidence. So, okay. So that's probably the actual shooting itself. So this all occurred on October 21st of 2021 uh, when Helena Hutchinson, Helena Hutchinson, she was born in the Ukraine on April 9th, 1979. She's only a year younger than me. Oh my goodness. Uh, she was married to a guy named Matthew and at the time had a one-year-old son. She had gone to film school. She had recently gotten a master's degree from the American Film Institute. And her job was the, uh, she was the cin cinema blah, 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 cinematographer. <laughs> I'll get it out. <laughs> and um, the prosecution explained that what that means is they create the overall vision of how this film is going to look on the screen. They, they choose the lighting. They choose the, um, the colors. They, you know, they... They, they pick out which footage is going to appear uh, in on the screen. Okay, I believe you. Um, Hannah Gutierrez uh, Reed was the armorer on the set, but she had two jobs. She was also a prop assistant. So she's a part-time prop assistant, part-time armorer, full-time job. Uh, 
And as the job uh, for the crop assistant, she was supposed to go out and source different items. For example, um, if anything that would appear in the film. So if they're in a kitchen, she needed to go out and source, you know, pots and pans and dishes and, you know, whatever's going to appear. So one of the things that she needed to source was guns, weapons, old time weapons. And I'm going to show you a picture of the actual weapon that was used in this shooting. It's a, uh, it's a pistol and it's actually not old. It's brand new. It, they, it was sourced directly from the manufacturer. So we're not going to blame the weapon, but did I mention there are more holes in this case than Swiss cheese? One of the things I used to do as a risk manager was identify when you're when you're doing a risk assessment, you want to find the holes in in the process that mistakes can happen. And there were so many in this case, so many. The other thing that she was uh, supposed to source and she did were blank or what they call dummy bullets. There's blank bullets, there's dummy bullets, but you don't want a live round anywhere near a, a movie set. You really don't. But unfortunately, somehow live rounds made it onto, through all the swish cheese holes, onto this movie set. Now the prosecution, um, through showing photographs, he is trying to explain to the jury the difference between a live round and one of these blank rounds and he he shows a picture um and you can see that the live rounds have what they call a a primer and he shows a, a box of these dummy bullets and there those you'll see that there's one bullet in this box that looks very very different than all of the other bullets it has a silver primer that is, according to the prosecution, a live round. And that was a box of ammunition that was found on the armorer's cart. They have this cart that they bring to the set. And before Hannah Gutierrez Reed's job is before she uh, brings that weapon to the set, it's her job to make sure that each and every bullet in that gun, and the gun held six bullets. Each and every bullet in that gun is a dummy round or a blank round. And you can do that several different ways. Um, you can, first of all, you have to take the bullets out. You look at the bullet, dummy rounds sometimes have a hole in the casing. Um, if it doesn't have, a, if it has a hole in the casing, then you know, okay, this is a dummy round. Um, if it doesn't have a hole in the casing, you look to see if it's missing its primer or the primer is in some other color than silver, according to the prosecution. And then you uh, you could shake it because the manufacturer of these dummy rounds will put in, um, or the people that are making these dummy rounds will put in either a spring, some kind of noise maker, or these BBs, and you shake it um, to make sure. And if you hear that, you know, okay, this is a dummy round. So her job is to take all those bullets out, or before she even puts them in the guns, make sure that you know, shake them make sure or see if they have a hole in the side of them and then you put them in the gun so that particular morning she uh she's you know she puts five rounds into the gun she can't get the sixth round to go in we don't know why but the sixth round won't go in so there's five dummy rounds in this well there's five rounds in this gun but according to the prosecution we're going to hear evidence that Hannah Gutierrez Reed was often rushing through this process that she would skip steps or she would just skip the process altogether. And they, part of the process is once she gets to the set with the gun on her cart, she goes to the assistant first director and she opens the gun and she together, the two of them check each round to make sure that it's a dummy round. And then, then it puts put back in the gun and given to Alec Baldwin or, you know, the person on the set that needs the gun. So that morning was pretty uneventful. They were um, filming Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin sitting on this church pew, drawing his weapon out. He was doing what's known as a cross draw. The prosecution didn't spend too much time on this 
cross draw issue. We'll get back to that when the defense does their opening arguments. Um, they had he's and Alec is just sitting there and he's just drawing the weapon and that's what they worked on all morning. So after the scene was complete, they took a lunch break. So during this lunch break, Hannah Gutierrez Reed takes the gun and puts it in a safe that's on her armor cart. After lunch, she gets the gun out. She she's able she cleans the the hole in the gun out, and then she's able to get the sixth bullet in. So now it's got six bullets, and um, Now, he didn't even need the gun for what they were going to do that afternoon. They were blocking the scene. And what that is, is they're trying to figure out who's going to stand where. And, and you know, it's in preparation for rehearsals. So they were just blocking the scene. But Alex Baldwin had requested the gun, and he's the producer. So they said, you know, Hannah, go get the gun. So she goes and she gets the gun. And like I said, she was able to put that back in. Then she goes to the assistant first director. He just, she, it's very sloppy. She just opens the weapon, shows him the bullets, puts it back in, and they, neither one of them check to see if there are any, you know, dummy rounds versus live rounds. Um, after that, she gives it to the director. The director, assistant first director gives it the gun to Alec Baldwin. Now, Alec Baldwin is sitting there practicing. Um, and while he's sitting there practicing this cross draw, the gun goes off. The gun goes off. It hits Helena Hutchinson. It goes through her body. Uh, it enters her body, exits her body, and then hits the director in the shoulder. She is, the director's not wounded badly. He's wounded, but not as badly as, as Helena Hutchinson. I'm sorry, I keep saying Hutchinson. Helena Hutchins. She, uh, it took a while for rescue to get there because this is, like I said, this ranch is thousands of acres it, out in the middle of nowhere. They they finally get there, the emergency people, and they realize they need to get, life flight this woman somewhere. So they get a helicopter, they life flight her out of there, uh, get her to the hospital where she is pronounced. Um, she does not survive. So the prosecution goes to goes on to describe that six live rounds were found during the investigation of this um, death. Six live rounds were found on the set. Two were in the box of cartridges that were being used by Hannah Gutierrez Reed that were on the armorer's cart. So now the defense gets up and they're doing their opening. And he starts out by saying, listen, this was a tragedy. This was a really bad tragedy. But that doesn't mean a crime was committed. And he says the only reason his client is here is because she is the scapegoat. And, uh, you know, I, I knew very little about this going into this case. But after these opening statements, and as a former risk manager, like I said, there was, when he started shifting blame here, I was like, oh my, this is going to be a really interesting case. So he starts out by talking about Alec Baldwin. He's like, listen, this is the guy that pulled the trigger. He didn't even need the weapon for a blocking of a scene. He asked for the weapon. He pulled the trigger. Everybody knows you don't point a gun at someone unless you plan to shoot them. He pointed a gun at Helena Hutchinson and he pulled the trigger. If you're not planning on shooting the gun, because Alex's defense is going to be that it went off accidentally. And I doubt we're going to hear from him during this trial because he hasn't had his trial. And he's going to take, you know, he's going to plead the fifth. He's not going to come in and talk about this. Not till, uh, not till his trial is over. Unless his ego is just that high that he, he uh, you know, who knows with Alec Baldwin. Anyway, he also talked about OSHA. Now, he described OSHA as an organization, uh, a couple this organization in New Mexico. Well, OSHA is a federal organization. It's in every state. Um, they, they are responsible for safety on the work site. And they came in after this accident and they investigated and they were given 
This, this production was given the largest fine ever imposed in the state of New Mexico. I don't know how much that was, but I'm just telling you what the defense opening statement was for safety errors that they found, including the fact that Hannah Gutierrez Reed had two jobs and she had written, apparently we're going to see an email where she wrote uh, to her boss saying, listen, I need more time as the armorer. And, he, you know, I, I don't have, I'm not spending enough time as armorer and that's going to lead to mistakes. And they said, nope, this is all the time we have for you to devote being the armorer. Okay. That's going to be an interesting. So they were cited for her having these two jobs and not devoting enough time to the one job. And, uh, you know, also for insufficient training on this, on the site. Now, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed had offered to train Alex Baldwin. Apparently doing a cross draw, a cross body draw is one of the most difficult ways to draw a gun. And she had offered to teach him how to do it properly. And he never showed up for the training. Then the defense attorney pointed out that just because a bullet has a silver primer does not mean it is a live round. Dummy rounds can have a silver primer as well. Then he talks about this guy named Seth Kenny. Now, I don't know if this guy Seth Kenny has been charged, but I got to tell you, what the defense has to say about him is not good. Apparently, Seth Kenny is the owner of a, a place called PDQ Props, which is where the live rounds came from. Now, Hannah Gutierrez Reed's father, uh, his name is Del Reed. He's a famous armorer. He had just finished working with Seth Kinney, the owner of PDQ Props, out on the set of Yellowstone 1983 in Texas. They had just finished that. And on that set, they were using live rounds to train the actors on how to react to a live round. So that when they got a dummy round, because a dummy round, it, you don't get the same kickback and, and as you would if you have a live round. So they wanted the actors to feel what it's like to actually fire a live round so that when they go to fire the dummy round, they can act that out. So after they're finished with this film, Seth Kinney takes the cartridge boxes back to PDQ props. PDQ Props is the same company that supplied the cartridges to Hannah Gutierrez Reed, who was well trained by her well known father on how to be an armorer. Now, he was supposed to, he had someone on the set. Seth Kenny had an employee on the set of Rust. That employee, I didn't write down her name. Oh my goodness. Anyway. After the shooting happens, she gets on the phone with Seth Kinney. We don't know what they said to each other, but afterwards, she goes to the armorer cart. She gets the gun. She takes the bullets and she throws them away. Yeah. Interesting. Now, we also know that after the shooting, the, officer, the first officer on the scene takes Hannah Gutierrez Reed. And Gutierrez Reed, sorry, I a lot. It's a mouthful. He takes her and isolates her as a witness, you know, because she's the armorer. He puts her in his vehicle and she's, she's away from everybody. And he actually instructs someone else, hey, go find the armorer cart. Meanwhile, someone's tampering with the armorer cart. And allegedly that's this employee of Seth Kenny. So this is going to be a really interesting trial with this whole Seth Kenny thing. Now, uh, I did not listen to any of the testimony that occurred on day one. I will listen to that and I will bring that to you on Monday. Yes. And of course, the Michelle Traconis case continues. Yes. So let me know what you think of these opening statements uh, for the death of Helena Hutchinson in the case against Hannah Gutierrez Reed. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to be live on 
Sunday morning at 11 Central Time. That's afternoon for you Eastern folks, guys, and late afternoon for you over in the UK. So I hope to see you guys then. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everybody.